everyone, this is Bria from Mythological Impact, and today we are going to be listing my top favorite romantic webtoons. Let's get to it. So if you're wondering what webtoons is, it's an online platform for independent creators to be able to put on their own content, such as like graphic novels, comic books, manga, whatever what you would like to call them, and it's free. So we're going to start with number 10. So this web comic is called My Gently Raised Beast. I will put the name of the artists and the writers um, on the screen for you to see. And the synopsis behind it is Blondina is living a real life Cinderella story. After growing up poor and enduring difficult childhood, she discovers that she is a princess of the Eighth Empire. However, her estranged father and half-siblings give her the cold shoulder when she moves into the palace. Blondina must keep a low profile. That all changes when she befriends Amar, a cat-like creature with mysterious intentions. For years, creatures like Amar and humans have struggled to live in harmony. Can Blondina and Amar friendship bring peace or will it deepen the rift between their people so what i like about my gently raised beast so this um web comic i have to say i love how fast paced it is um it gets right to the point the romance between blondina and amar that eventually arises is really really sweet and cute and the artistry is i really like certain aspects of it but certain other aspects I think there could be some pictures or whatever that are drawn kind of wonky um so it's not particularly my kind of art style but um I definitely know there's people out there that really loved that art style and then what I didn't like um so even though I said that I do like how fast-paced the story can be sometimes it can be a little bit choppy and all of a sudden you could be like okay what just happened because like it will just skip to some random part and like I feel like some things could have been drawn out longer certain arcs can be drawn out longer um uh and also Amar and uh, um Blondina's relationship he can be a bit aggressive because he's supposed to be kind of animalistic and he can be kind of controlling and stuff like that so there's certain aspects about the relationship I don't really like but they do have a lot of character development and they do tend they do kind of like at over time uh start to understand each other more and respect each other more so in the end which uh, so this uh webtoon is still ongoing and um i'm hoping by the end of the series um everything seems to work out well and i do absolutely love the story and it just um flows very nice even though it can be a bit choppy now number nine number nine is a web comic called happily ever afterwards it has 74 chapters and is ongoing the synopsis is what would you do if you were reborn as a character from your favorite romance novel for Peony, an avid fan of the Song of Asgar, the answer is simple. Marry your favorite character, of course. Reincarnated as the princess of the kingdom of Garten, Peony is determined to marry Rich, the second male lead of the Song of Asgar, and former prince of the uh, Ferrisban Empire, who was banished to an in in hospitable land after the novel's happy ending, which didn't end so well for him. Amidst trials and tribulations, can Peony and Rich make the most of their second chance at life and love? So I have to say, I absolutely love that synopsis. The story for this uh, web manga is amazing. I love the storyline and I love the characters. Um, I have to say, sometimes it can be a bit dramatic and that dramaticness can be pretty cringy, but that's sometimes what you get when you're reading. It's Korean based. Um, a lot of uh, the webtoons on webtoons are um, uh, were originally in Korean and were translated to English. 
um and also you get different kind of um ways of life too so like even um like peony herself uh she's kind of more of a damsel in distress which can be kind of irritating sometimes but i'd have to say um it also develops rich's character uh and uh their romance together number eight so number eight is a webtoon called the first night with the duke it has 84 chapters and an 18 chapter spinoff and it is completed so the synopsis is a handsome selfish noble falls for a beautiful kind commoner at least that's how the story is supposed to go when an average college student wakes up as ripley an extra in her favorite romance novel she resolves to enjoy the luxuries of her character's status while watching the novel's plot unfold from the sidelines. However, her plans are soon derailed when she finds herself in bed with no other than Duke Zeronis, the novel's hero. Dodging the villainous schemes, the Duke's advances, and her own feelings can Ripley keep the story on track and survive beyond the first night. So I'd have to say I absolutely love this storyline. I um, was a bit skeptical at first uh, given the beginning and even the animation style. At first it didn't really um, I didn't really like it all that much, but I have to say it grew on me and so did the story. Um, and I would have to say uh, Ripley, Ripley's and Zeronis's love story is absolutely amazing. Their arc is awesome. Um, how much character development this uh, author put into the story is absolutely amazing. Like I said, at first, a lot of people, even I read in the comic comments of this webtoon um people saying they weren't sure about it at first but it, ha it almost grew on almost everyone <laughs> that is right number seven number seven is a webcomic called sub-zero it has 147 chapters and is still ongoing the synopsis is what would you sacrifice to save your family how far would you go to protect your people? For Clove, the last princess of a near extinct dragon clan, the answer is the unthinkable. Marry your greatest sworn enemy in an effort to bring peace to your land. So I absolutely love the artistry and the writing behind Sub-Zero. My only, I have to say my only issue with Sub-Zero is sometimes with the art and the storyline, things can get a little spicy, um, which some people enjoy. Me, it depends on the day. <laughs> um, but, and I also think that the storyline can sometimes drag because there is a lot of politics behind it. If you really enjoy the politics in stories, then this is definitely your type of story. Um, if not so much, um, a little bit can be probably skipped here and there um, if you want to get back to like the romance aspect of it. But it's a very great story and very well written. Number six. Webtoon Morgana and Oz has 39 chapters and is still ongoing. The synopsis is what happens when a struggling witch meets an angsty vampire. Either love or war, Morgana belongs to a long line of witches and Oz to a rival vampire clan. After a chance encounter and maybe a few stray spells, <laughs> these two need to find a way to work together or risk all out war between coven and clan. So I'd have to say again, I love the art and artistry and the writing behind Morgana and Oz. Um, I love the characters. I think it's very beautifully written and drawn. Though uh, I have to say there's really, I mean, I can't really say there's any really big issues I have with it yet, but 
it's pretty new. I mean, I know it has 39 chapters already, but I feel like it really hasn't gotten, I mean, it's gotten to the story. It's definitely gotten into the story. You already know what's going to be going on and what they're going to be fighting and all that other jazz, but, um, I don't really have any complaints about it quite yet. I feel like it needs to be delved more into number five. The Raven Saga has 63 chapters and is still ongoing. Once upon a time, in a land of fairy tales, lived a girl and her grandmother, protected and secluded from the rest of the world. When her grandmother is taken by a mysterious boy, Wen must travel to the outside world to save her, but the world isn't as magical as she once thought and danger lurks around every corner. With help from her friends, will Wen be able to solve the mystery of the boy with the ravens? And more importantly, will she be able to solve the mystery of her past? So I'd have to say I'm biased. I love the artistry of the Raven Saga. It's my favorite artistry of them all. I love the drawing style of it. Um, and the story is also very well written. Um, I love the different character designs. I love how she um, makes everyone look so different from each other. Everyone just looks so beautiful. And the characters um, all have really good personalities. I'd have to say, well, I can't even say that because I was going to say that everyone is a little bit too sweet and nice for my liking, but there can be some very mean and under not understanding characters um but most of the characters are very nice if i don't know if that's something some people like or dislike um but yeah i have to say i love uh, the raven saga's writing it's all mismatched fairy tales i know that's that a lot of people have already heard of stories like that um but she, the character, uh, the pr girl that writes this, she, um, did a very unique, in a very unique way, and I have to say, I absolutely love the addition of the ravens into the whole fairy tale aspect. I know she based it off of another fairy tale book that I have never written, not written, never read before, um, but I absolutely love ravens, and I love the incorporation of ravens into a fairy tale setting. Number four, Swimming Lessons for a Mermaid. There are 96 chapters plus five spinoff chapters and it has been completed. Synopsis. Choa is a mermaid who cannot swim. Discouraged, she trades her ocean for a pair of human legs. But when the star of the high school swim team finds out her secret, he offers her the chance to prove her family wrong. Free swimming lessons for a mermaid. I'd have to say I love this story. I love the idea of a disabled mermaid working really hard to be able to swim in the great ocean again. It's so empowering and I have to say I love the I love the characters and all of their character arcs and their character development and how they interact with each other. It's such a good story. Um, after, I have to say at first though, I didn't really like the art style, but I'd have to say it grew on me over time and since it's finished, um, I'd have to say she grew as an artist as well. The art does change over time and it gets better and better. Number three. Number three is Nice to Meet You. It has 67 chapters and is ongoing. Synopsis. A ditzy university student, Mew, finds a lost student card. Instead of doing the sensible thing, Mew decides to let fate take the wheel and try something silly. L little did she know she would be confronting the owner of the card, Daze, who has some things to say about what she did. Did Mew make the biggest mistake of her life or the best decision of her life? Follow these two adorable goofballs to find out. 
I would have to say I love the art style and writing behind this one as well. I love the characters, the character development. I love how Mew is like this really cute ditzy character. It's just so funny. Um, it's a very hilarious romantic comedy and the it's a university life so it's super super relatable um uh the only i'd have to say my only issue with it which is not even a creative issue is that um uh the person that's writing goes on a hiatus um every time uh there's a season finale and i'm like i just want more i want to finish it number two Number two, The Kissing Vet. It has 126 chapters and it's still ongoing. Synopsis. It's senior year and Sarah Lynn just turned 18. She's got great friends, a cool dad, or so he thinks, and a whole lot of ahead of her. The last thing she needed needs is to worry about having her first kiss. But that's all about to change because her good pal Patrick just challenged her to a bet that will either lead to love, heartbreak, or embarrassment, or maybe all three. The Kissing Bat also has amazing art and amazing writing. I love all the characters and I love the whole storyline behind it. I love uh, Sarah Lynn. She's hilarious um, and super cute and all of the characters, all of the drama, um, all of the mishaps, misunderstandings are just so cute and so amazing. Uh, all the flirting is so relatable. Um, the high school setting is just so relatable. It's just so, so cute. And I'd have to say my only issue with it is the pacing. Um, sometimes it tends to drag a little bit, but that's a very minor complaint considering um, they fill it up with a bunch of comedy and uh, side stories and all that other stuff that are quite interesting. Um, but yeah, that would have to be my only complaint. The story is super cute. And I highly recommend it. Number one. So number one on my list of favorite romantic webtoons is Romance 101. <laughs> it has 139 chapters and is still ongoing. Bottoms Planner might be full, but one thing she desperately needs in her diary is a date. When she is lured into joining a programming club by her friend's hot co-worker, it looks like there might be hope for her. But will her inexperience lead her to downfall? And why does she keep running into his bad-tempered friend instead? So, obviously, Romance 101 is my favorite romantic rub tune. It is such a cute story. It has amazing characters and amazing character development. It probably has the best character development of all of the webtoons that I have listed so far. And I think that's my favorite part about it. Uh, Barum's um, personality, uh, I feel like resembles my own. I see myself in her so much. Um, and I love how they illustrate things through video games. So when they're trying to talk about emotions, um, and like what people are thinking and feeling they explain it in video game terms uh they draw it out in like little video games for example uh like uh someone uh came and he was kind of like uh, a threat to someone's romance and they said competitor has arrived uh do you choose to fight or not and it was just like it's just so cute i love the whole dynamic of it and i love like the different characters personalities they all have their own like personalities uh they don't like get overshadowed i mean some characters get overshadowed but they ever everyone has their own like character arc all the different characters you all they show what they're thinking what they show what they're feeling and it's just such a good cute romance and uh, there, there's so much communication between the characters. I just absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, so that's my favorite webtoon, but I absolutely love all of them. They're all of my favorites. I have read other, um, romantic webtoons. I think these are not the only ones I've ever read. Um, these ones are just happen to be my favorite. And like I said, 
they're my favorites so they might not be uh this might not be the correct order for you if you happen to read all of them you might like one or the other more or less and even myself they go i kind of go back and forth between um which ones are like uh one through th one through ten you know i'd probably read one of them and change my mind the next day but i'd have to say currently this is my list of favorites and this is how i rank them uh so but if you like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe uh for more of my content um please also uh leave a comment down below um on what your favorite webtoon if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations for me and uh, if you have any ideas of what you would like to see in the future content wise from me, uh, if you would like to me even go more in depth with each of these webtoons, like I could do a review on each of these webtoons or on a uh, webtoon that is your favorite, please just let me know and please support me. Uh, I love making this content for you guys. Um, and that's about it. Um, so I will be seeing you guys soon. I hope you guys have a great day, amazing day. Bye-bye.